Right, so we're back to atomic structure now. Um, so if you look at your periodic table, you'll be able to see that europium has 63 protons. Um, 153 minus 63 gives you a number of neutrons, which is 90. And because it's the europium 3 plus ion, it's got three fewer electrons than protons, so it's got 60 electrons like so. Now, this one catches a lot of people out. So, how many electrons are in a 1s subshell? An s subshell can only hold two electrons. A 3p orbital. An orbital can also only ever hold two electrons. In a 3p subshell, there are six electrons, but in a 3p orbital, there are only two. And in the third shell, you've got an s subshell, a p and a d. So two plus six uh, plus 10 gives you a total of 18 electrons. Right, so now what do we to calculate the number of atoms um, in 0 0.0019 grams of europium? So first of all, work out your moles of europium, which is 0 0.0019, divided by the relative atomic mass of europium, which is 152. That gives you 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5 moles. Then to get the number of atoms, you times this number by Avogadro's constant, which is on your data sheet, which um, is uh, uh, 6.2 times 10 to the 23, and that will give you uh, 7.5 times 10 to the 18 atoms. Okay, so this one may freak you out, but um, even if you're not sure what, it, what you need to do, just work out the number of moles of each one. So I've got a mass of europium, so they told me a mass of europium, so I'm going to find out the moles of europium, which you've just uh, done a similar thing in uh, the last example. So it's mass divided by the uh, molar mass, which is 4 times 10 to the minus 3. You've also been given a volume of hydrogen, so uh, you can work out your moles of hydrogen, which is going to equal your volume divided by 24,000. And if you do that, it comes to 6 times 10 to the minus 3. So the ratio of europium to hydrogen is 2 to 3. Yep. Okay. So we know... We've got europium plus sulfuric acid goes to give me europium sulfate, but I don't know the formula of europium sulfate, plus H2. But what I do know is for every two europiums, I need three hydrogens like so. If I've got three there, I must have a three there to get it balanced. If I've got a three there, I must make I must have three sulfates there, and I've got two europiums there, which means I've got a two there. Okay, so on to question twenty-four now, and we have got an equilibrium to look at. And the first thing he wants me to do is work out write the expression for Kc for this reaction. So let's do that. Um, we will know that Kc is equal to the concentration of the products CH3OH divided by the concentration of the reactants. Remember you must use square brackets and for hydrogen I will square the concentration because I've got a 2 there. It then gives me the value for Kc and it wants me to work out the equilibrium concentration of methanol. So let's rearrange this expression. Kc times the concentration of carbon monoxide times the concentration of H2 squared is equal to the concentration of methanol. So then all we have to do is put some numbers in. Kc, they told me, is 14.6. The concentration of carbon monoxide is 3.10 times 10 to the minus 3. And then I'm going to times that by the concentration of hydrogen, 2.40 times 10 to the minus 3. 
and that of course is squared. And if you do that, you will find the concentration of methanol is 2.61 times 10 to the minus 7. And that of course should be, they put the wrong units here, that should be moles per decimeter cubed. Right, so we're now on to a new equilibrium. Um, and uh, they give it to you there. It says when the temperature is increased, Kc decreases. State the effect, if any, on the equilibrium yield of NO. So remember, Kc is equal to the concentration of the products divided by oops, over 6, divided by the concentration of the reactants, like so. So that is my Kc expression for this react reaction. Kc, they told me, has got smaller. If Kc's got smaller, it means that this has got larger and that has got smaller. So if that's got smaller, it means that the amount of NO has decreased. So we can say the yield of nitrogen monoxide has decreased and the equilibrium has moved to the left hand side. Right, so for the next one, um, which I won't put on the board, uh, but just if you look at the paper, it says which element has been oxidized and which element has been reduced in this reaction. So let's have a look. Nitrogen here is going to be minus three because each hydrogen is plus one. Oxygen here is zero. Nitrogen here is going to be plus two because oxygen is minus two and hydrogen there is plus one and oxygen is minus six. So nitrogen has been oxidized from minus three to plus two and oxygen has been reduced from zero to minus two.